Perplexity Pro and the Spaces feature can be an absolute secret weapon when it comes to your SEO content copywriting. The Spaces feature allows you to do a couple of things which you really should be aware of because this might solve a lot of your problems that you're having when you're writing very specific and expert type content. See, you can upload resource files to the space as well as links, giving it contextual understanding of who it's writing for. This allows you to write really high quality content, understanding a contextual awareness of who it's writing for and who it should link to and a bunch of other things that I'm going to show you today. Now, Publexity Pro is usually $20 using the link above or in the video description. You can try it out for $10. You can try it out for $10 only a month. That is 50% off. What we're going to do is do a spaces for perplexity for this business, which is Martin. We're going to start a perplexity pro spaces for this business, which is Lewis Martin Jewelers. And I'm going to show you how you can use this to create extremely high valuable content, such as guides for taking care of watches, for example, a bit of a competitor analysis, and then find all the frequently asked questions that people are asking, let's say on Reddit, and then answer them in really high quality content. So what you're going to do is go to perplexity make sure you get the $10 off, 50% off with the link in the video description. And we're gonna start a new space. Here, we're going to name this, for example, uh, I'm gonna name mine Lewis Martin Space Tutorial and the description is going to be a place where we're going to write high quality content for Lewis Martin Jewelers. In the AI model, I'm gonna choose, leave it as auto, so it will choose which model is best for the given task. In the custom instructions is where we're going to place a certain prompt, which I've got ready here. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like this prompt because it just gets to answer the question in a way that I want to. Let's say you have a particular tone of voice or you want a particular formatting when it answers. This makes things a lot easier. For example, I've got here, please act as experienced SEO specialist. Uh, thoroughly researching and understanding the client's unique context before responding. In essence, I am forcing it to view the data before it gives us the answer. Provide actionable SEO recommendations tailored to their specific goals. This allows us to be very niche and stop the fluff and give me actionable, really good advice on what I need to do. Ensure each suggestion is practical and direct and contributes improving the search engine ranking. I've got the client's website, the overall structure formatting, and a bunch of other things. I'm going to leave it as that. And I'm going to continue. Now is when you want to add the sources. You can add files, you can add links. Let's add the links right away. So what I'm going to do is just add the home page here in the link section and add the domain to add a link there. Beautiful. And I know that we're trying to rank, for example, when it comes to this guy's, the vintage watches. So I'm just gonna add that link as well so I can tell it to refer to this information later down the track. What else can I add in here would be really good. Well, if you've done any kind of competitor analysis or keyword research or anything that you think might help and you can tell perplexity to kind of look at before it answers, that is the perfect thing to do. So in this instance, I have a competitor. In this instance, I have a competitor analysis that I've done for these guys previously, and I'm just going to drop this in there. And I'll leave a link to a video that took takes you in a step-by-step -step process on how to do that competitor analysis. But essentially I'm looking at all the competitors or the main ones, uh, what they're ranking for, how many backlinks they have, and all these other things to give this space a lot more contextual awareness, right? So now that we've got the files, the links, let's start talking to it. So what we're gonna do is help us to see what we're missing. Tell it to look at the competitors in this Google Sheet and understand what they're doing and perhaps tell us what are we missing and what can we capitalize on for our strategy when we're trying to rank for vintage watches. That's really important. That's gonna be the main keyword. I'm gonna make sure I've got deep research here and I'm gonna ask it that question. I'd like you to understand the competitors for Lewis Martin. I've left it in the competitor analysis documentation file. And I want you to provide me with opportunities for content that we might be missing. Understand what the competitors are doing, what seems to be working for them. Understand our client and give me maybe three to four content recommendations, maybe content pillars that we can concentrate on to be able to rank for the main keyword 
vintage watches. Now, this is very broad. This is very broad, but whatever. It is the first kind of thing that we're asking you to do. And I'm going to do deep research here. I'm just trying to extract a bit of information as and find what is really relevant for me. A couple of things to understand here as well. While it's doing that research, I'm going to go to another space and show you that I've been writing a lot of content here. For example, one of the very difficult things to do in some spaces is write very niche and high quality content. For example, this is a perfect one. How to really take care of an Omega watch or a high quality watch. I'm not a watch guy, so I wouldn't know. Uh, if, you're, if this is your client, the unfortunate thing is that the client probably doesn't have much time to write this type of content, like a how to take care of guide or how to invest in these kind of watches, for example. But by using things like perplexity, you can get 99% of the job done you can choose the right model and you can even create an image here because perplexity has access to generate images, which a lot of people don't know. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. And you can see here that it's reading through the competitor analysis. This is an automation that we did, but you can rest assured that it's actually reading through the data set, which is great. And now you can see that it's doing a thorough analysis because we gave it the data. It's understanding the estimated monthly search traffic of all the competitors, the keywords they're ranking for, their URL, what position those keywords are in. Remember, these are still applications, so you wanna give it the most amount of high quality data. Garbage in, garbage out is still a thing here. And that's what we've done by giving it really good quality data. Okay, let's take a look here uh, at the first sentence and see Lewis Martin is well positioned in the vintage watch market with a strong website traffic and keyword rankings, but there's significant opportunities to enhance content strategy based on competitor analysis. Perfect. Okay, so competitor analysis strategies. Duh, duh, duh. Let's have a look at the content pillar recommendations because this will be really interesting to use this as a source of content for our later for our later content, let me explain in a second. So pillar one, vintage watch authentication and education. The data reveals significant search volume for educational terms around vintage watches. Users seeking guide on authenticity, valuation, and purchase decisions. Boom, that's a really good one. Lewis Martin should develop an authoritative content series focused on educating consumers about vintage watch authentication. That's just really, really good. Number two, pillar two, New York City vintage watch heritage and shopping. I like it. Uh, pillar three, investment grade vintage watches. Pillar four, vintage watch care and restoration. So I tend to agree with this stuff because, well, I like it, but also it's looking at the data set and evaluating it really well. So let's say we want to take this as a fundamental for our content pillar strategy. People get confused with content pillars. Essentially, it's just a way to organize yourself. Like today, where what are we writing about? Well, uh, heritage watches, for example. Okay, that's in pillar two. Let's make sure that we're linking to all the, or a lot of the content within that pillar. That's really it. Don't overcomplicate it too much. What we're gonna do though, is we're gonna export this as a PDF. And I'm going to add this as a knowledge file into this space so that it knows, well, this is the pillar or content pillar strategy that we should keep, that we should develop. I'm gonna add the file back in there. Boom, so now, it made the content strategy for me. And if I start a new conversation with perplexity space within the space, it already knows what the content pillar strategy is going to be. So I don't need to remind it and go back and forth. I absolutely love this. Perfect. So I'm just gonna read that PDF really quickly because I forgot which pillar we want to go for first. Perfect. Okay, let's really understand pillar one. And I want to extrapolate on that a little bit more and create a bit of a content strategy around this. Maybe I can write three, six, 10 blogs around this with the help of perplexity. So this was the original conversation and I want to kind of follow up on this and maybe I can change it to a reasoning. And when I change it to reasoning, I can change the different models here. R1 meaning from DeepSeek, O3 Mini, OpenAI, and Claude 3.7. I like Claude 3.7 at the moment, and I'm gonna ask a follow-up question here, and I'm going to ask it to, let's flesh out pillar one, vintage 
watch authentication and education. I want at least four sub pillars and content that I can write around that to support this pillar and ideally become the topical authority figure within the niche. Let's develop a complete strategy around pillar content number one. This is vintage water authentication and education. I want to understand maybe three to four sub content pillars that we can attach to this and content ideas that we can start writing today to support this. By the way, if you're wondering, the transcription tool that I'm using is called Super Whisper. I'll leave a link to it below somewhere. Okay, perfect. I'm going to hit enter and see what we come up with. Okay, let's see. Now we've got sub pillars for this. Sub pillar one, authentication fundamentals for collectors. Really good. And this is addressing, it picked up because it's addressing 24 monthly search searches a month. So let's just verify this, right? Now content, this is gonna vary between which SEO tool you use, but as long as it's around the mark, then I'm kind of happy to go along with it. I'm gonna to go to Ahrefs. And all these tools, they should be used as a guide, not an absolute source of truth, because more often than not, they're not 100% correct. So I just wanna get an understanding for, look, is there enough traffic? And there definitely is. For me, that's close enough, and it's a good keyword. It's easy, keyword difficulty of five. It's got an estimated monthly search volume of 1,400, but a traffic potential of 5,200. So whilst it said 2,400, there's some discrepancies there. Don't worry about that. There's enough search volume for it to make sense, right? Even if the search volume wasn't so massive, I'd still go for it because I know that they're getting traffic for this and that's the right traffic for them to get, but I'm happy with that decision. I looked at the data, great. Checklist, sub pillar two. This is brand specific authentication guide. I think this is really, really important. Perfect, that's a really good idea. Mm, let's look at sub pillar two. This one seems to be an interesting one. Again, I know nothing about watches, so this would be interesting to see if I can come up with this really good. Maybe a watch enthusiast in the comments can let me know if the content that it generates is any good. Let's see, sub pillar two, specific content authentication guides. Before I even move on, what I wanna do is actually download this whole thing so that I save this as a pillar. And what I'll do is add it back into the space as a documentation that it needs to look for when we're writing within this sub pillar. All right, so let's go back into number two and we're going to go content ideas, authentication, okay. It's giving me the, the chance to follow up. If I click on that, it's going to deep dive into the Rolex authentication stuff. I've got reasoning 3.7 already selected. It's reading the website already, and it's going to give me a deep guide on this. Now, here's one more thing that I wanna do. So this is already going to be a really high quality blog that I can place or a main content pillar page, doesn't really matter. I've got the FAQs here, which is really, really good. Which are also the frequently asked questions that people are asking about it. And it knows this stuff because it's researched this already. I can take this a step further and let me show you how I do that. If I go to just a brand new search without being inside this pages, I can go into Pro or Sona, but I can choose the social stuff. And I like this because I can say, find me all the frequently asked questions that are being asked on Reddit about how to authenticate vintage watches such as Rolexes. The reason why I wanna do this is because these are questions that people are asking, but perhaps aren't being answered in Google and therefore people are going to Reddit to try and find the answer to that question. And I know that when you do the social media option that I just did to only search social media, it doesn't really mean social media, it practically means Reddit, which for SEO it's okay, but anyway. Now what I could do is copy all this, go back to my original guide and put it in my deep dive here, make sure that I'm answering those questions. Let's say I'm not happy with the way that it's, re that it's written this and I want to use something else for it here. I can get, I can write it with a deep research with Gemini Flash, but let's say I, please expand on this a little bit, make sure you 
turn this into a well-structured blog, consider H1, H2s, inappropriate manners, and whenever you can, make sure that you link to the client's website. Okay, now I like this a little bit better. And let's look at this again. So that is a H2, that'll be the critical importance of proper authentication, beautiful. And I've got here the link to the client, which I want, and that's done already, right? So it's linking to the right sources here. With that done, let's say I want an image to go along with it. So all I gotta do is in the top right corner is go generate image and I can choose photography, for example, and it's going to use Flux 1.1 to generate an image. Uh, about this blog post. And here is my generated image. Not the best, but not too bad. I can definitely use that as a starting point. Now, all I really need to do is rinse and repeat this strategy. So this was for my subcontent pillar two, for example. I can write hundreds and hundreds of blog posts that are well researched, understand the contextual background of what we're writing for, and upload this to our website. You do need to do some additional checking. Make sure that you're happy with the tone of voice. If you're not, you can change that in the system settings to write in a certain component. But I find this tool incredibly useful, and I think it's something that is really being underutilized from an SEO perspective. If you like this type of video, make sure you like and subscribe. To, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you want to learn more about how to maximize AI with SEO tools, you should consider joining our online community. I'll leave a link there for you to check it out, but I want to, don't want to bother you too much. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.